Thanks for taking some time to ask some, um, answer some questions for us, Nicholas. Uh, firstly, uh, thanks to your efforts, the Anti-Homosexuality Act, Homosexuality Act was recently abolished on procedural grounds. What does this mean for LGBTI rights in Uganda? Well, it simply meant that people who are being investigated, people who are being prosecuted under that law, now have regained their freedom. But as I always say, the worry in Uganda is less about the law but more about people's attitudes, people's uh, hatred of uh, LGBTI uh, people in Uganda. The general population uh, haven't received people of different sexual orientation warmly. So the law isn't the problem. My view is that the people's attitudes towards uh, LGBTI in Uganda is more worrying than the law. And just how dangerous is it for gay people in Uganda at the moment? Well. When I came here over the weekend, there was uh, a gay man who was simply walking back home after work. He was attacked by a mob, his jaws were dislocated. So every single day, gay people face that sort of danger from the society. It is even worse for some of them who face rejection from their own families and have to navigate through this kind of hatred every single day of their lives. Each time they open the newspapers, there are negative articles about them. Each time they try to access services, they have a lot of difficulties. The next door uh, shop that you go and buy, maybe a, you know, a beer or a soda, people are always looking at you with suspicion or pointing, I mean, pointing at you, uh, not with their fingers, but with their mouth, you know, to show that they don't like you in their society. So they really face a very difficult time every single day in our country. Is the U.S. evangelical movement still playing a big role in the LGBT, anti-LGBTI efforts in Uganda? The American evangelical movement have now trained local agents and local pastors uh, to whom they pass on resources, for, to whom they pass on information to continue their onslaught against gay people. They have so far reduced the activities in Uganda because one of the leading gay pastors is being prosecuted in the U.S for crimes against humanity, for what he had done against gay people in Uganda. So that has scared them a bit, and they have scaled down their work. But their agents, their network that they have created, continues to every day preach an anti-gay agenda across Uganda. Just finally, uh, you and the organisation you established in 2013, Chapter 4, uh, you are currently involved in challenging the Public Order Act. And um, what implications do laws such as this one have for freedom of assembly? And how hopeful are you that you can have a real impact with changing something like this? The Public Order Management Act simply uh, restricts the freedom of assembly and provides that in order for one to have an assembly, you must get really what is interpreted to mean the permission of the Inspector General Police. So it making, it's making the process of demonstration just extremely difficult, but also making it like a privilege that you've got to go and ask for it to be given. Uh, and I think that that law has no place in our country. We filed a case in court to challenge that law. The case has not yet been heard. We are hopeful that if the court is independent and if the court is objective, the court will strike down sections of that law that we think are an abuse of human rights and our constitution. Great. Thank you very much, Nicholas. Pleasure's all mine. Thank you very much.